Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are actually going to be covering a Lenore player. Lenore is the newest character that's actually just been able to in, in ranked here for Eternal Return. So we're very excited to kind of just see what are the players sort of picking up and what kind of strategies they're going to be using with a kind of character like this. Today we've got Amir with us. How you doing Amir? I'm doing really good. Getting to see a character like Lenore. I've been uh, waiting for her since we got to see her at the end of last season. And, uh, yeah, I think she hasn't been performing too well in ranked recently. I know she got like a big hotfix nerf out on her release because she was dealing a bit too much damage. But I think uh, we either see some buffs to her uh, in the next patch or we just haven't seen a player that's really putting her to her uh, full capacity yet. Well, exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking. It might be the fact that maybe she does need a little bit of love, but since she's still relatively new, we're not 100% sure. Maybe there is some tech, maybe there's some uh, strategies that people haven't fully mastered yet. So we wanted to take a quick like early view on the ranked players and see what they're doing. Currently, Cliche has been actually performing pretty decently with this character. So I'm excited to see how, how they kind of perform here in KR. One of the things, too, is we'll we'll kind of go over the kid a little bit, talk about the character. So Lenore, how she works is her passive Melody of Pain gives her CD, gives her, C, her CDR stacks. And dealing damage on target below 50% HP gives her stacks, which allows her to break CDR cap. So like right now, she's only at 31% and she doesn't have anything that makes her go beyond 35%. But Lenore can go up to commonly pretty, uh, pretty easily to like 40 plus percent CDR. Yeah, it's very weird how her passive works, um, seeing that this is the first passive that actually gives you CDR, whereas a lot of passives in the game deny you the ability to give you CDR. Um, hers actually allowing her to hit all the way to 50% CDR if you just keep stacking CDR on top of CDR on top of CDR. Yeah, which is really interesting. I, honestly, it's probably my favorite mechanic from her. Um, the next thing to talk about is staccato so staccato is her q and basically this just shoots out five waves in a straight line in front of her she can cast spells while using q the other thing also to consider that i forgot to talk about her passive wise is every third cast you can see that right under her hp bar empowers it and so for her uh staccato q it'll make her do 30 percent increased damage so this is like your bread and butter most times you're probably going to be using this to do more damage output when it comes to your next ability, it would be her W fine. She gains a shield for 2.5 seconds and roots nearby enemies. Uh, the empowered version though, does give her 30% more shield and 20% movement speed. I think this is probably the second most common ability that you'll probably see on Lenore being used as an empowered. The 20% movement speed is really huge in being able to like utilize um, spacing and getting in or out of fights more easily. Yeah, I think, oh, as we jump into a fight, we actually see her using Nullification on this build um, to try and weave in and out, get away from a bit of CC. Um, and you see a lot of the time she's using these Empowered Qs and Empowered Ws to get bonus this bonus shield, which actually kept her alive a bit longer there. Um, sadly, 20% movement speed is not enough for her to get out of the uh, Adela ult, though, and she will go down. But yeah, as you were saying, the W is very important. The in-fight mobility is um, underrated a lot. Being able to run around the fight a bit faster, either get closer to your opponent or get further away from them, it, uh, it's a very useful tool. Well, exactly. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really important to kind of consider, and I, I think that's what we're gonna see the most time when we're looking at Lenore players when you're when you're looking at a high-end Lenore player versus a newer player Lenore is really utilizing which empowered you're using for each scenario. The we'll kind of wrap up the last bit of her of her main kit, which be Dalseno. Dalseno uh, pulls the target towards the center. You actually just saw right there grouping up those mobs. This is your setup ability. If if you actually empower, it slows them for sixty percent. I genuinely think this is actually probably the weakest empowered. It doesn't do a whole lot. Like the sixty percent slow can help maybe if you're relying on your team to do the rest of the catching, but. Most times you're probably only using your E to set the rest of your abilities up because if you use ERQ, most times, as long as you are right after your E, 
you'll be able to full combo. And speaking about R, well, I'll continue yapping here over a mirror <laughs> as I as I finish up the last ability. So um, Capriccio of Agony basically shoots at a straight line, and after three, hit, if it hits a target after three seconds, it'll ma make a massive circle around that target and cause everyone within the circle to go insane for i believe at the start it's like 1.3 seconds and gain uh, 200 yeah gain 200 percent attack speed attacking nearby enemies hitting your allies first yeah so with the uh, bird r in specific i'm pretty sure i i don't know if this is the exact correct order i think the order is always going to be um enemies then allies and then you um but it's a very weird one where I think the range at which it hits her allies is slightly bigger than the range at which it hits you. I've seen a few instances where um, the Lenore player will ult someone and then you're just like slightly outside of the ult range and then no one gets hit. But other times where a Jackie will start running across the map to try and hit her ally again. Um, it's I think it's a bit of a an iffy ability maybe some bug fixes need to come through on it um but it generally seems like uh the range at which it explodes when it's fully charged is the range at which someone will start running around trying to hit their ally no for sure i mean the the th main thing about this ability too like you're talking about where you know it's a little inconsistent on how it functions the most important things to consider when you're looking at this ability is one it always targets allies first or, or her the targets allies first and then random enemies and then your team as the last priority in the system but it also is essentially a, a stun is the best way i would look at it if you get someone insane they actually start hitting their teammates like an adc like rio hitting their team i mean that is the dream and that is going to be incredible damage but think of it more so as like a one second stun that does a lot of damage because it does ticking damage and then burst damage after after it explodes yeah and another thing that uh i mean i think you made me aware of it actually um is don't be scared to just randomly throw this on a bear in the middle of a fight because <laughs> if you don't feel like you can start hitting the enemies as they're playing like tazia and shoichi and uh like abigail characters that are way too hard to connect with um, throw this on a bear, get the bear to be insane, and it'll actually start running around trying to hit your opponents. Um, and it'll use, it'll start using the bear slam and just start auto attacking them at 200% speed. Um, your ult does work on animals and, um, the androids being Alpha, Omega, and Wickeline. So if you're able to get this technically four man ult off, um, it's also a small thing that you can utilize yeah yeah I've, I've used it on a baron and surprisingly enough it actually did work out i never thought about alpha or like omega but you know what that actually would be a crazy play to all like omega and then have omega start smacking a team yeah and we do see a fight come out we actually see the empowered e i think to get the slow off to make sure that our team can go in for an engage and just starting to whip more abilities out. I think we went another empowered E trying to keep our opponents slow to make sure that our team can catch up. Um, and then yeah, as we're getting to the tail end of the fight, we're going into some 1v1s. Uh, we're just seeing whatever empowered we can get off at the time, throw out as many abilities, make sure that we can try and get the kill, which sadly we're unable to do. But yeah. it's very nice to see these empowered E's are mainly being used to help our team catch up to the fight as I think our melees were slightly too far out of the fight but when it started, but with the 20% slow that our E gives, or sorry, 60% slow, um, we were able to make sure that our Yawn was able to get in range, yeah, our Yawn was able to get in range and our Estelle was able to start following it up. No, exactly, yeah, and I think that's a that's really important to consider too, is exactly which empowers use the right times, right? Because she doesn't need herself to catch up, she needs her team to catch up, so instead of using like W to speed up, she's utilizing... Uh, the E for her team to catch up instead of doing a little bit extra damage on the Q side of things. Yeah, we, we also see uh, her E being used to check some bushes as it is a very nice and easy way to check these bushes. 
Oh, interesting. So one thing I really want to talk about on her build is she is actually going the Dragon's Fury. Now on the first patch, or I think it actually was a hotfix. The first hotfix that came out, they actually changed the interaction of Dragon's Fury for Lenore. So Lenore used to be able to just press Q and if all five or if all the sound waves hit, each one applied a stack of Dragon's Fury onto the target. That is no longer the case. So now she does have to hit multiple different abilities. But I guess we're still deeming that it might be viable. I mean, I guess if you land a full combo on someone, it will basically full stack them anyways. Yeah, but we do see actually the OP heart L coming through, letting Jenny just have health us. Um, sadly, our Q doesn't connect, but we're able to throw the alt down onto our engager. Actually, we don't get it onto the person engaging. We throw it on Alex clone. But I think that with throwing it right on top of the Alex clone that was on top of us, the enemy team is now too afraid to actually finish their engage because if they keep going forward, then they have to jump onto the Lenore ult and then start hitting their allies. And if they don't go forward, then now the Alex is separated off. Yeah. Even if you're unable to use this ult to force your opponents to hit each other, if you connect it with someone or something, that zone be basically becomes a zone of, I don't want to go in there for your opponents. Everyone starts to get scared, and now you have a bit of extra room to play with. It's a very good piece of util to make space as well well exactly oh. and i think i think that's i think that's really really important to kind of consider is that one is that don't be afraid to use lenore's alt her alt is just so useful in a lot more ways than people think it's not it doesn't matter if you you're not playing for the big three man alt that makes everyone punch themselves until they die you're playing for zone control a stun and damage i feel more than anything and but if we notice there, as soon as she pressed E, she sent out every single spell. And that's the best way to do this. As soon as you send out your E and you're confident that your E is going to land, you should be pressing your R almost immediately. Because if you press E and R at the exact same time, it is a true combo if your E lands. It's just making sure uh, you're confident that your E lands. <laughs> as long as they also don't have a dash. Just oh. make sure they're uh, okay. Well, they're no, not that's... deciding to instantly get out of there. Yeah. Well, that okay. No, that's that's if they dash the e. <laughs> but if your if your e lands, that will pull them in. And if it pulls them in, your r will hit exactly where they get pulled mm -hmm. into. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a very very strong combo, uh, for sure. But yeah, I mean, Alex played that really well, completely just countering her. But even then, like you mentioned, she just stayed in the center of where the clone was, and it didn't matter. Yeah, it's especially it being the clone, um, it's very nice because it means that uh, if in the case of, let's say it's a Jackie and both of the Jackie's teammates run away, now that Jackie's hitting you with 200% attack speed, you, you might have to be scared. Um, <laughs> but with it being an Alex clone, neither of her allies were able to get close and we're not really scared because the Alex clone has no ability to actually hit us, doesn't have an attack programmed into it, so... We're able to just use this as a complete zoning tool. Don't have to be scared of anything. Um, but actually talking about that, it's very scary to start using your ult when it's either someone alone or as someone that's able to zone really far away from their team and is very reliant on auto attack. Because that person will just get 200% attack speed and they will start running you down. I don't think I've had the... Um... Pleasure or displeasure, I'm not sure what you want to look at it as, of having that happen. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest. But I totally can see that being very terrifying. Most times I find, like, is when someone gets hit by a combo, they'll just, like, walk backwards and stay away from their team, and then they'll just be stunned for one second, and then they'll come back into the fight afterwards if they react to it. Now, it looks like there's a fight happening. Lenore's going to be joining a bit late here, so we'll have to see how she does it. She sets her up with the E. Yeah, we're looking to connect a few more abilities. I think they're looking to take this fight as they should hope that this heart team took a few abilities out earlier, but it looks like the heart alt was still up. Trying to get a new empowered ability, connecting the alt onto the Jenny over there, but she wasn't actually able to connect it with anyone else. Luckily, connecting the alt with the Jenny, I think just forced Jenny to be scared of staying in the fight as if she does She's going to start hitting her team. Jenny's a very auto attack reliant character and she will just start killing her team, which meant that she just instantly wants to get out. We didn't even really have to do anything that fight. We made sure that we hit our on the right targets, threw a few abilities out to help our team out. And then uh, 
once our ult connected with Jenny, she was out of the fight. We we forced it to be a two v three and well, technically a a four v two, and then just won it from there. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Hart kind of kept uh, uh, Lenore out of the fight from the most part during the main parts of it. So Jan sort of and uh, Estelle took a lot of the the heavy lifting at it. But yeah, exactly. That that all just completely just took Jenny out, and she she couldn't do anything. She had to opt to either sacrifice herself to the um to getting her team killed, and most likely she'd probably die because even if Jenny did do what you mentioned, where like you know she dashes in an angle that she like starts hitting us for two hundred percent attack speed. She's just going to eat free a free combo from Lenora at that point and go down. Yeah, but it looks like we actually will have a Shukai getting ulted while he's in his ult. It doesn't really matter though. Shukai autos don't do too much. We're basically just stunning him right in front of us. Able to dump out a lot of damage and we see the enemy Lenore blinking forward on us using the empowered W to be able to get that kill and get out of the fight. So sadly, we will be going down. Our Estelle also unable to secure a kill going down. Looks like our Yawn might go for a revive right under us. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get the double buy. Yeah, double buy back here, yeah. Little unfortunate. I mean, the Lenore ult uh, works out decently in the sense that, like, it doesn't... It makes it so that her two teammates can't walk up and help the Jukai. But Jukai is too tanky. We're not able to kill the Jukai and uh, sort of end up losing the fight from there. Yeah, sadly, I think we went for not enough empowered cues meaning that we were lacking a bit of damage a lot of this comp's damage is going to start coming from us um and into this late game sadly now that we have to buy i don't think we can actually get blood act or blood uh guitar online so this damage is going to start lacking fights are going to have to start going a bit slower this and... fights, these fights are about to go crazy there's three th wait, is there two teams <laughs> in red right now and there's two other teams in the same zone what is going on there's a huge yeah, brawl see. happening we actually don't hear any of the things going on above us or we didn't want to connect the fight without our team able to join in throwing the eo trying to force one of these teams to make something happen our i think estelle just is going so far forward she wants this fight, and yeah, we're able to pick up a few more stragglers. It being day five is really nice. Getting some of these solo kills off, we force, I think, two teams to now be at least one player down. Able to deny the Theodore the Reva or the TP out as well. <laughs> oh, Full combo no. him, <laughs> but oh, <laughs> yeah, we do force him to 200% auto attack us. Luckily, she was smart enough to walk in front of the Theodore um, green, so we're not actually taking any bonus damage. We're just taking simple no attack power theodore auto attacks yeah and, uh, they won't be hurting as hard as uh something like a bernice will exactly exactly and i mean like again still worth it it does a lot of damage and also makes it so you can guarantee your hits but definitely a little scary when when someone can do that yeah but it looks like we do have our empowered ability up we know that there's a team above us we know that there's i think we know that there's something below us and it, oh we're actually seeing the team blink forward unable to get anything which is very unfortunate going for a, <laughs> a risky tp as the oh. magnus that was biking died and TPing right onto a team of three it's the That's heart the team. team these guys are our mortal enemies and we're sitting in the oh. bush trying to wait to connect something. Sadly, the Jenny was able to dash out and also use D skill to get that bonus move speed to make sure she doesn't get hit by our ult. I so that was an example the there end. of the of the ER, but they use E D skill R. I think pressing the D skill actually makes it take too long. I'm not sure. If I, um, does D skill share the same input time? Like, do you have to like, or can you press R and D at the same time? Both will go out at the same time. I think that you can throw both of them out at the same time i it's a very risky one to to say because a lot of abilities actually don't lock you out of d skill for guitar skill but we do actually see our team going forward just instantly trying to make something happen that was even i got surprised by it heart walked up slightly too far and estelle just capitalized on using second e to go forward and then our yawn was ready to go forward with her they just both are so in sync and then jenny's walking too far as well yon just going forward i we, the entire point of us fighting this team is every time we see them we fight we do not care where they are how they are just keep going forward keep killing and a lot of that fight we were just using empowered e empowered q i don't think we used empowered w at all as 
a lot of what we just had have, have to be doing in these late game fights is pumping damage for our team well yeah and i mean again th that team comp doesn't really have any like heavy diving gauges like the only person you're care uh worried about is the alex so maybe you didn't power w if you see the alex jumping on you but because we have yawn and uh stell constantly just using these empowered e's to catch people and then letting them just go in like you mentioned you know they were both in sync the second they saw Lenore catch Haze, or sorry, Heart. Heart just got immediately obliterated, and then they were full sending it towards it. Yeah, and we do see our teams are going to be moving in as a uh, final zone is coming out. I think our Lenore should be prepping her empowered ability, hopefully. Or, yeah, there it is. Now we have empowered ability prepped. We're actually going to be trying to poke out a bit more damage with Empowered Q. We connect the E. That was a very close corner one. And I think our team, yeah, it's going to be going forward. We're going to be looking for an engage. Hit the ult onto the, uh, I think it was the Debian Marlene. But sadly, she de-skills it. And with our Q, we're just able to pump enough damage. Our Yawn going forward into the back line. It, we're just putting out enough. That was, that was, that's just so much damage. And yeah, even though, you know what, she parried that it doesn't matter there it is it's still a ton of damage and that is our first view of lenore guys i hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you all in the next one